Hello, Ken Spriggs here. Uh, returning to my discovery build, uh, my commission discovery build. Actually, this would be part eight in that build. I have seven other parts. If you want to go back and check those out, I think the last one was in December and then I, maybe late November, and then I got my new Saturn 3D printer. So that kind of derailed me a little bit with some 3D printing and working on my Ahsoka Tano meeting uh, the Mandalorian fantastic diorama. So. So uh, if you want to go back and check out those videos, uh, most of those involve me building the interior. In fact, I think they're all about me building the interior uh, for the pod bay and the cockpit. So now I'm working on the uh, external part, the actual ship itself, uh, the model kit parts. And um, so in this episode, um, we're working on the spine. Very tedious, uh, lots of repetition, nothing really super difficult, but... Uh, it takes a lot of time, so I won't bore you with a lot of that, but I am going to show you some key points that um, that are important to note in how to uh, to build that part of it. I'm also doing some modifications on the antenna array and putting on some magnets um, for the um, for the back propulsion unit and showing you those as well. So, okay, let's go and take a look. Okay, so uh, I'm beginning to uh, start building the cargo modules for the discovery for the spine. Um, not a really difficult process per se, but very tedious, very time consuming, because you have quite a bit of parts to build. So there are uh, five different uh, sizes of cargo pod. You have A, B, C, D, and E. Each one of these has one, two, three, four, five parts. And there are 60 modules all together. So you have six of these, nine of these, nine of these, 18 of these, and 18 of these. So all together, you have 300 parts that you have to glue together, cut out, sand off the little bit of sprue attachment, <clears throat> glue them together. So the biggest thing you wanna do, the most important thing you wanna do is to be organized and to, um, to have everything set up the way that you want it to do. So generally what I like to do is I'll start with like say A, and I will cut out just all the parts that go to make up all of the six cargo modules of A. And I'll organize them on my workbench so I'll have all the bottoms together, all the, the one side pieces together, the other side pieces, the two ends together in a little pile. So I can just grab one at a time and glue them on and put it together. And once I get all of those done, I'll set them aside, go on to the next one and so on and so on. <clears throat> that way, you're definitely um, getting it nice and organized and you're not going to run into problems. So now the next thing that you're going to want to do is that you have very um, detailed instructions on how to glue the various pods, all 60 of them, onto the spine in the correct order so that they're accurate to the film, so the filming model. <clears throat> so that's where it gets kind of complicated, but they give you a nice little diagram right here. Everything's color-coded. You have green for the starboard side. You have red for the port side. And you have blue for the bottom of the spine. And the way they're designed is the two top ones are angled and there's a, a groove down the middle that goes right down the center of the, of the spine. So uh, it's, if you follow these instructions, you have them organized. It even shows you all the pictures, a little picture of them. You have A, B, C, D, and E. And A is one piece and it spans the entire length of one of these sections. B and C go together and also span the length of a section and so do D and E. And then sometimes what'll happen is they'll have D followed by E this way, then they'll have E followed by D so they'll reverse them and so on. Same with the C's and the B's. Uh, but the B and C always go together, the D and E always go together. So. Um, now, what I like to do, what they recommend doing is to glue all of the little tube sections onto the spine first and have just an empty spine and then go back and glue all the pods along it. I don't really prefer that because it's hard to line them up and get them to be straight because there's a, a little bit of play and you want to make sure that, um, that that groove is straight all the way down and they're all lined up. So if you look at it straight on, you're going to see these all straight, all the edges are straight. So what I like to do is build each one of these as if it's a separate sub-assembly, a little section. And then 
when I have them all together, I'll glue them together and put them onto the spine. Now, one thing you want to be careful of is um, these little um, two parts, they have a male end and they have a female end. Now, there's a little warning right here, which I wish they would make in a big, right, big red box or a big exclamation point or something. But what it says here is that the cargo module supports are oriented different, differently. The four rear cargo module supports are oriented differently than the six forward cargo module supports. What they mean is on the, on the front part, you have the female facing forward and the male facing back. And all four of those, all five of those are that way. Well, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, up until the male end goes into a female end in that, sec that center one, which is actually four-sided. Now, the other side of this is also a female end. <clears throat> so for the back four, this flips around and you have the female end going forward and the male end, or sorry, the male end going forward and the female end going backwards. So if you're doing it the way I'm doing it, you have to make sure to flip those around so you have these oriented correctly. So, okay. All right. So if you use your instructions, you keep yourself organized, you're going to get these on correct and it's going to, um, it's going to flow pretty smoothly. So let me kind of give you a, a basic demonstration of how I do this. All right, so as that time lapse showed, uh, I cut out all the parts for the A cargo module, which has six different um, modules, 30 parts, because obviously you have one, two, three, four, five parts per six is 30 parts. So let me point out a few things real quick just to kind of help you when putting these together. Um, the things you're gonna need to do this is definitely a sprue cutter because you're cutting out 300 parts uh, something to sand off the little bit of sprue residue like an emery board i just like to use cheap emery boards now the good thing about these is that most of the surfaces on these are very smooth they're flat like this that's a flat surface right there so it's really easy to do it you can cut pretty close to it with your sprue cutters without worrying about damaging it and you can clean it up pretty easily. Same with this, like this on the ends, ends are flat, ends are smooth, not a big deal. It's not cutting into any detail or any part that you really have to worry about in order to, um, to clean that off. So that's one of the benefits of this. Most of the sprue placements are in places that you're not really gonna have to worry about damaging any detail at all. It's just, it's nicely done, very nicely done. So you might have noticed in the, well, it was going by fast for the, um, for the time lapse, but these two parts look very similar. There you got some three gaps in the middle there. They look very similar. They even have some similar detail on the outside. So it's easy to confuse them. But what I was comparing when I put them into the right order is if you look, it's, it might be hard to see on the camera, but the little teeny notches, the notches right here, this one has a notch here, this one is further up, further out, further in. So these are two different pieces. So you can see that that's the case. So that's how you can tell them apart. Uh, likewise, you have some pins where these are gonna line up. So you can see why on the one side, they're further in for this side. And on the other side, they're further out for this side. And likewise, the two ends, you have the little notch here is not in the center, it's off to the right. This notch is off to the left. So when you put in the corresponding piece, that has the little key part off center. It's gonna match up with that key part where it needs to be. And that's the important part. So they can only go on one way. You cannot put them on 
incorrectly, they simply just will not fit. Plus, I have to clean that up or it's not going to fit right. So, okay. One other thing I wanted to show you, um, you want to use a fast setting cement to do this. So, I found this. It's called uh, Plastruck Bondine. It still has an odor, but it doesn't bother me anywhere near as much as the other stuff. And this sets very quickly. So, the nice thing about it is you literally would put the part in place and you would just brush on. It has a brush. You would just brush on some glue and capillary action takes it into the spot and it glues it in place very quickly. It dries very fast, just in a few seconds. You hold it there for a few seconds, let it go. You still have a few seconds to position it right and then it's going to set up and it's ready to go. So that's the best way to go. Um, any other kind of glue that you have to put on and it takes longer to dry, it's going to be a hassle. Uh, and then this is obviously made for styrene and ABS plastic. So it's designed for that sort of thing. So the best way to do it is to use the top of the cargo module as the part you want to do. Now in this case, it doesn't really matter which side I put the end on because they're both the same. It's no difference. And the sides, obviously, so I'm going to have two of these and I'm going to have two of these. So very simple to do. Probably the easier way to start is on the end because then you have something to put your um, pieces against. So, sorry if this isn't in frame. Okay, so they marry up nicely and they make a nice flat edge so it's not a problem. And it can only go in one way. All right, so once you have that in place, what I could do is do the other one. Nice thing about this glue too is that I can tack it in place and it's it's where it needs to be and then I can just finish up putting some more and I'm just putting glue in the inside not putting anything on the outside so it mars that edge or anything it doesn't really have to be all right so I got the two ends in place so now I need to go ahead and put on the these pieces here so what I could do is simply put it in place put some glue in the inside Okay, and again with this glue, it's very thin, so it goes in with capillary action and it holds it in place nicely. Press it down a few seconds. And this stuff actually welds the plastic together, which is really nice. Okay, that just leaves the other one. Now the other one's going to be a little trickier because obviously I'm going to have to um, stick it in place. I can't really get glue on the inside but it gives you a few seconds of working time and then what I can do is put it down this sorry the center seam here because that's underneath you're not gonna see it and just squeeze that together and that gives me a nice solid seam all right and there it is and it's a fairly solid piece when it's done so they did a really good job of making these so they can go together pretty easily. And so there's the first one of the A set all complete. So, so not too bad. Let me go ahead and finish up the rest of these and, um, and just kind of show you that process. And there you go. So there is one set completed, the A, 
longest ones. Nice and sturdy too when they go together. Uh, like I said, uh, definitely start with the two ends. Once you get the ends on, you have a nice solid piece for the two side pieces to click into place and hold them in place. Uh, definitely use organization because the outside of each set, whether it's one piece or whether it is the two pieces that go together is going to have this very prominent ridge section sticking out. It's very obvious. The inner pieces of the two part sections are gonna have this flat piece between them. So you have that flat gap in between and you don't have these two butting up because they wouldn't work right. That wouldn't look right. So uh, in addition, when you get those other pieces together, you definitely want this on the outside. Every one of these sets, whether it's the long one or the two pieces, always has these two parts on the outside of that, um, of that particular set right there. So, okay. All right, <laughs> finally all of the cargo pods are done. The A, B, C, D, and E. D and E were the hardest because there's 18 of each of these. These are all one set, this is all one set. A lot of cutting out, a lot of uh, cleaning up. Nothing particularly hard about doing any of this, just basic modeling skills, but uh, repetitious. Definitely repetitious, a lot of different parts to cut out 300 pieces all together and then you have to sand them down and um, and get them all glued together so all completed uh, now I need to go ahead and cut out these uh, spine parts get them glued together these ones will have a little bit more cleaning up to do as far as like this this curved part right here and back here to get them cleaned up once I get all of these done then I can start gluing the pods onto them and complete each of the sections um, for the um, for the spine So I completed all of these spine tube sections, getting them sanded down, gluing on these little parts, the three little connector parts on all of them. I noticed that it seems like there's an extra one because there are two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, but I think there's only really eleven sections. Um, so I choose an emery board to sand in the seams, there's a seam on each side on these two sections. For this curved section, I used an emery board that I cut to the right width so I could get it in there and just sand it so it did it smooth, so. Okay, all right, so those are all done. So now I'm ready to start gluing on the, um, the cargo modules. I just have them all in this cup. Uh, I, it was easier to throw them in separate baggies. I'll just dump it out and sort them out by the type and then uh, use my instructions and start putting them all together, so. Okay. All right, so I sorted all of the cargo modules, again, out of the cup from to A, B, C, D, and E. So I have them ready to go, and uh, I have my instructions right here on how to put them there. So there's a couple of um, ways to go about this. I've seen some people take all of the spine parts, put them onto the, their, metal tube and complete that all first and then go onto it and glue each of the pieces along those parts. Um, I don't prefer to do it that way uh, and the way I did my original one I'm going to do it again this way. I do each of these sections as a sub-assembly and so 
I will start with this piece and I start from the front. So I figure out the orientation of this piece because that's important. Uh, because once again, there is a little keyed notch right there to the upper left. And that keyed notch matches up with this keyed part on this end. And then it just follows through. So this has the same positioning keyed notch, the next one has it, and so on and so on. So once you get that started and you know the right orientation, so what I do is I go through and I just put a tiny little tick mark, as you can see right there with the felt tip marker to show me this is the top of this piece. And by top, I mean it's obviously the top of the ship because the way these are set up is the bottom is flat, the top you have the starboard side and you have the port side and there's a gap in the middle that goes down the center of the spine. So once I get that set up and I know that this is where it goes, I can then make this piece number one. And on the end, I wrote a little one at the bottom there. And then likewise, I have some pieces where I have a, a three, a two, and I'll just follow suit as I, as I add them on. And again, there's that top tick mark. And it's in between because the, um, the modules go where these little keyed parts are on these sides. This part in the middle is, is the open part. So this part right down through the center is the top of this piece. And this piece on the bottom, this one here is the bottom. So this way when I'm all done, I will have 11 of these subsections and they'll be numbered one through 11 and they'll have the pods in the right orientation. And I'll be able to tell from this little tick mark on the top that this is the, the way that they go. At that point then, it's an easy enough matter to simply glue these one at a time onto the, the metal rod and make sure that the part that comes out of here goes in far enough to where it's supposed to be. It actually goes in quite a bit because it goes into where it butts up against this part in here. So there's gonna be a good bit of um, of metal spine there so okay so let me continue working on these um these sub assemblies of all of these cargo modules all right and there is the first subsection completed now the key to these parts that are two pieces you want to make sure that that gap in the middle is lined up straight and you can kind of eyeball it this way too and make sure that they look straight together because they're just sticking on a um a single pin like especially these ones this one on the left is just balancing one end on the pin so you want to make sure that the that the part over here isn't going down isn't drooping down so that they're level like you can see right there and then you want to make sure that the gap between them looks straight and they line up. So if this lines up, if this is all lined up straight, once you put them together on that rod, they're gonna, by very nature of its design, be straight with all the other cargo pods. All right, so this cargo module is all done. This, well, this subsection, I have it ready to go. I have it marked number one. So now what I can do is just go ahead and put it back here. I'll make some room and I'll just line them up from left to right so I can see that they're in the right order. Okay, so I will go ahead and um, and do the remainder of these and I'll do a time lapse for them so I won't bore you with it. Uh, and we'll get all these cargo modules put onto these spine sections. <music>
Great. So as you saw from the uh, time lapse, I completed all of the mar uh, the cargo sections. I call them sections because they're it's one section that's one piece of a tube. Also completed the um, the square um, uh, cargo section for the antenna array, and I also drilled out the little piece put a tube through it. This one I just crimped on a piece of aluminum tube. The one on top I pushed down the tube and put some glue on top to glue it. And then I wrapped some thin styrene stripping around it to give it a tighter fit so that this piece rotates. It moves around. So this is the top. This goes down onto here. And that'll be glued in place. And this piece then goes on top of this. And then the antenna array goes onto that. So it'll be able to rotate around which is an easy thing to do. I'm also going to work on making it so that the actual antenna part can go up and down and, and rotate as well. So um, one other thing that I have to do, and like I said, I'm starting to glue these on. This one's glued in place. So a couple of words of caution and or advice. So this is stainless steel tube and we're gluing plastic on. So I'm using CA glue, but you by no means want to coat the entire rod area where you're going to put that because when you slide it onto there, you have very little working time before it starts to harden and, and, and stick onto the metal. So all I did was I put enough, maybe like nearly half of it. I just put a little bit of CA glue and it's gonna hold it in place. It isn't going anywhere. And then once I glue this one into place, same thing. I'll just put maybe this much right onto it, slide it quickly into place and it will be where it needs to be. And likewise, the nice thing is too that if I have these all sitting flat on the bottom and make sure that the um, that they're the right way, remember I put that little tick there at the top to show where the top of each of these were so I don't get them confused. And they're in order on here now, but I also have a number. There's number one, because number one is the first one that goes to the front, two, three, four, five, and six, and so on. Um, but another crucial element that you need to take into effect is that there is a really different amount of excess tube sticking out depending on what part you're looking at. So the two parts that go into the antenna array have that much, about an inch or so. Right there and the same here. That's about an inch or so. So these two are half of the width of the inside of this because inside of this there is a a thicker, you can see it there reflecting, a thicker stainless steel tube that they go into. And so they just meet in the middle and they glue into that tube. So what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna glue the back one onto this. I'm gonna leave the front one off for easy transport when I ship it to the client. And then all he's gonna have to do is put some CA glue on this and glue this completed section right into that tube and it'll hold it in place. Um, but as you can see, there's a lot of tube in the back because all of that has to go through these several collars, through the entire propulsion unit, and actually literally comes out of this hole in the back of the propulsion unit. And it goes maybe about a good inch into the center, um, whatever it's called, the engine bell uh, assembly. So, there's quite a lot of the tubes sticking out of the back. Um, and then this is the correct amount that goes into the front because again, it goes from here up until this point right here. So again, that's a pretty good distance in order to give it a nice support into the front of the command sphere as well. So what I did was I just temporarily put these parts together. This one was already together. I put these into them and took it in as far as it could go and then slid these onto it until it met up with the um, with the plastic part that it needs to meet up with. And the same thing over here. And then uh, I took a marker and I just marked off a line where that's supposed to be. And these are, these are pulled up right now. So there's the actual, there's the actual marker line for the front. So once I move all of these up and glue them into that, this one will fit right onto here and it'll be flush with that line right there. So that'll, um, 
that'll be right where they need to be. Because what I'm gonna end up doing is this is gonna be one glued assembly and then once it's done, it's gonna get glued onto this part. And this is removable. This comes off of the collar here with magnets and these aluminum tubes. So this will come off. So this whole piece will be glued onto this whole section. This will be one sub-assembly. This will be glued onto this piece. And eventually, once I get these built, these parts here and this collar part, everything other than this will be glued together as well. And there'll be some aluminum or stainless steel tubing sticking through that will go through into the propulsion unit. And I'm gonna likewise have magnets on the propulsion unit that will hold this piece onto it so it's removable. Uh, and again, for transportation purposes, and it's just easier to take them off and get into them, that kind of thing, so, okay. All right, so I um, I built the parts for the antenna array. So the big dish and the little crosshairs and the antenna on it and also the two little ones. As I showed in the little picture, that little tip on the end is so super tiny. <laughs> These are really tricky, so be very careful when you're cutting them out, especially this big, this one, which is all one piece because you got to snip real close on all four of these and then sand them down so just be really cautious when you're doing it uh, now i showed in a previous video that i made this piece here so that this would rotate so i can spin it around and then this piece still goes on to the um the antenna array cargo module and then on top of this goes this piece right here that normally you're supposed to just glue that piece down inside and what you would have is, um, well, initially you had one of these pieces and the other piece was attached to the other half that goes on to here. And I showed in my previous stills that I used a pole saw and I cut one of these off so these are two independent. And the nice thing is that these are already rounded so that they're in the right position where that piece would rotate. So it can go up and down. And they have the little detail on the end as though it's a real piece that moves. So what I'm doing is I took a piece of 5 30 seconds tubing from Evergreen. And I cut a piece of it that's big enough to go between these two. And it fits right inside of these little parts. And like I said, one of these I cut off so I sanded a flush. And then they have these two little notches. So the two little notches just go right down into that piece right there. And this is how it sits. And I've added a little bit of photo etch onto this. There's a little bit more that goes onto it. So I'll show you that here shortly. Um, so to give it the idea that this thing rotates, that part in the center there is where this piece is going to go inside. Now what I've done is I've taken a... Um, a hole punch and I punched out a couple of little circles and they turned out to be pretty much just the right size and I glued them on either side and it really is hollow on the inside except for one end because it already was so what I'll do now is I will drill out a hole that is big enough for the 530 seconds tube to fit through which is right here and then I will take this back off and put that through and then that piece will move up and down. So let me go ahead and do that and I'll show you how that's gonna work.
right, there we go. So I put a hole through the center of this post in the middle, which is glued on to, which is attached to the, the antenna array. And then uh, that fits right, the two fits right through it and both ends of these go onto it. I don't have it glued in place just yet, but um, the two side pieces will glue down into this part. And then that way, this piece is free to move. I'm just doing that with one hand, so it's a little tricky. Okay, so it'll go up and down. It's pretty good range of motion too. And then obviously when it's on here, it'll spin around as well as moving up and down. All right, and I also put a piece of styrene in that middle section there to, to hide the seam that was there. Okay, so it looks pretty good. All right, so just a few more things with some photo etch in addition to these pieces, and these are from the green strawberry kit. And then I'll be ready to glue on these antennas, and we'll finish up this antenna array. All right, so I, um, I glued one of the sides onto the styrene tube in the middle. The other one's on there pretty tight, so I don't have to worry about it. So that's on there pretty good. Uh, and then it'll get glued down into this piece right here, as I said. I'm ready to put it on. And um, I also took some styrene and I filled in these two open areas right here on either side, sort of like these ones on top. But the ones on top you're not gonna see because of the big dish. But those ones right there, you're gonna see, so I put some styrene over top of them and want to make it look finished. All right, and I glued on one of the um, one of the smaller dishes, and I'm putting on some photo etch. It's really hard to see, it's very delicate. And this is what it looks like, that little piece right there, but you gotta curve it around. <laughs> and then one of these little teeny circles is supposed to go on the end of it, once I get it glued in place. So what I'm doing is, this little piece I'm bending around the part of this needle file just to round it out. And then I glued it on at the bottom where those two big pieces are. I'm letting that set up with some CA glue. And then I'll, um, I'll finish curving around the, the top of it and then glue on that little circle. So, but very delicate. <laughs> all right, so I believe that's the rest of the photo etch. And then I'm ready to get all of the dishes glued on at that point, so, okay. All right, and here is the completed antenna array. So I have the main dish glued on. I finished those little parts there. Come on, focus. Let me zoom in on that a little bit. All right, so I finished these little parts behind it, the little delicate metal work. They look kind of cool. Very, very delicate. For sure, you have to bend them get them put into position but they look kind of cool they do add some some realistic detail to the back of those and you can see where i filled in those gaps on the two side arms so they, they look solid some photo etch there and then i have the um antenna moves up and down And then it rotates around, as I said, too. So, okay, let me go ahead and put this onto the um, antenna array uh, cargo module. And then that'll wrap up the spine for now. All right, and there is the finished antenna array. And um, most of it's glued on. The, um, the little rounded parts right here are not. They'll still come off. Uh, I'm going to probably leave it this way for transportation purposes when I send it to my client so he can just literally just glue this piece right down into the um, slot right here. This is easy enough to do. The rest of it's glued on. This piece is glued on, but it still rotates. So it can rotate around 360 degrees. And it goes down. And it comes back up.
And um, the way it's designed is there is a bit of a catch on the back. Oops. Yeah, it's almost meeting up with it. You can see right where it, that's as far as it'll be able to go. Uh, but then it'll go down fairly all the way down until the dish starts making contact with um, with the front. So, okay, but looking pretty fantastic. And I've got the extra photo etch on there, which looks pretty cool. All right, all right. So I'm making some magnets to connect this collar onto the propulsion unit so that this will be glued onto this piece which then goes on to the rod and gets glued onto the the spine and then that way this entire piece can come out uh, and a good bit of that rod still is going to come through here come through here and it actually sticks out here just about an inch or so into the center um, nozzle so um, so what I've done so far is I took a piece of tape and I just measured it for this curve and I cut out two pieces of thick styrene and I glued some magnets into it, into each piece. I drilled a hole and glued, glued magnets with some CA glue. And then I um, put it into place with some uh, five minute epoxy. And then once that's set up, I went ahead and filled up the gap behind it with five minute epoxy. So it's, it's pretty much set up now. It'll harden completely, but it'll be a nice solid piece. And then this will just go right under here. And then what I have to do is cut some more pieces out of the same thick styrene and make corresponding pieces that are going to be on the inside of this piece and have two magnets that match up with this. All right. And then once I get that done, I can go ahead and glue this onto here and this piece onto here and get that whole spine completed. And then I can work on the propulsion unit separately. Okay. All right, so I finished the main modifications on the uh, propulsion unit to be able to attach it with magnets. So I made these two pieces that are glued on the inside. And then I, first I just glued them with some uh, of my bondine. And then I, once that's set up, I put some five minute epoxy behind it. And once I put these two halves together, I will put in some five minute epoxy from the outside and finish gluing in the top as well. So it'll be solid. Uh, I also made up this little part here to assist in putting in the, um, the long steel rod, steel tube, because it's, it's got to go back and go through the hole in the back and it sticks out quite a bit. So all I did was I put some thick styrene, I drilled a hole in it, put in some plastic tubing that is the same, a little bit bigger than the piece there. And then I glued that onto a part in the back as well. So it just comes out. So the whole thing just goes through. Let me go ahead and put that on there and I'll show you. All right, there we go. So the steel tubing, stainless steel tubing goes right through this. It comes out the back as it's supposed to. Um, it'll be easy because it's such a short distance now from the opening to just fish this right into this opening rather than try to see it. And it's, it's tricky to try to get it through there. Um, I also glued this piece onto the spine. So from this collar all the way up to here is one piece. And then the, um, the back one or the front one is all completed as well. You can see it back there going up to that part. Uh, and both of them have magnets to connect them on. This one has magnets to connect it to the command sphere. And this one obviously onto this piece. So I'm ready to go ahead and glue on the top of this and have that as a separate part to build up as a sub-assembly. So, okay. All right, and one last modification that I made is uh, this little tube in the bottom. There is a magnet glued into the bottom of it, and it matches up with a magnet 
on the bottom support that came with the kit. So this comes off. You can see the magnet is down inside there. There's a magnet glued onto this. So if he wants to display it on the supports, this just goes right into the magnet and it supports the kit in the back. And there'll be one on the front on the command sphere as well. So it holds it in place on the stand. Uh, the middle one is really not a lot of room in the spine to do that. So there won't be one there. Okay. All right. And here are the completed spine sections, uh, including the antenna array and uh, the magnets on the back of this to connect onto the um, propulsion unit. So it goes in pretty simply. You just line it up with that little tube that I put in, bring it in there, and it just clicks together. And the magnets hold it on, and it's a nice hold. All right. And then I put the, um, the little uh, stand connector on the bottom of the magnet. So if he wants to use the stand pieces, there'll be one on the command sphere as well. He can just attach it with a magnet. It gives it a little more support. <clears throat> now I wanted to get this on and all these other parts on because before I glued these two halves together, I had to have everything internal done. Otherwise, it would be hard to get to. So then this just pulls back out. It's a strong magnet too. <laughs> and then you can see in there, there's the the little part for it to go into. So, okay. All right. And then um, on the front of this, I have the piece attached that I can put on the antenna array. So that's ready to go. And that rotates around, goes up and down. So that's pretty cool too. Okay, so let me kind of show you, you're not gonna see it all in frame, <laughs> but these two parts just go together. There's just enough of the stainless steel tube that goes in and matches up with the other one. Oh, I'm gonna line up those top lines. There we go, right there, okay. All right, so it's very, very large. <laughs> do, 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 do. Just kidding. <laughs> But you can see the whole thing goes together and makes the entire spine. So, okay, I'll try to get some uh, some shots of that because it's going to be hard to get it in camera otherwise for that. All right. <laughs> All right, so a lot of progress on the outside of the ship. The ship itself uh, completed the spine, and um, I have uh, the connections ready to go. So now I can begin doing the painting and the um, and the masking of it and doing the different patterns of grays on the ship itself. So, all right, so uh, thank you to all my new subscribers. Stay tuned. Um, the ship is going together pretty fast, and I'll be able to... Um, start doing some really cool things with it. All right, thanks a lot.